the USS Windgrace glided silently through the dark expanse of the Calorian Breach. The crew was on edge, even though there was no logical reason. The mission was straightforward. Survey the edge of the rift, catalog the spatial anomalies, and return to Federation space. But as they approached the nebula's edge, something changed. Captain, said Commander Dorix, I'm picking up strange readings from within the nebula. It's almost as if the nebula itself is alive. Captain Aaron Raval frowned. He was a veteran officer known for his calm demeanor, but even he could feel the oppressive weight in the air. Elaborate, Commander. Dorix tapped a few buttons on his console bringing up the data on the main view screen. There's a series of strange energy signatures within the nebula that seem to be... to be moving. They're not consistent with any known ship or life form. It's as if they're they're shifting, almost like they're trying to avoid detection. Cloaking devices? Asked Lieutenant Ramirez from the tactical station. Unlikely, Eryx replied, his voice tight. The patterns are too erratic. It's, it's more like... Like they are hunting us. Lieutenant Tavon, the Vulcan science officer, finished. Her voice was calm, but her eyes betrayed a flicker of something almost like fear. Hunting what? Raval asked, his voice hardening. The question lingered in the air as the crew worked in tense silence, their eyes fixed on the view screen. The swirling colors of the anomaly, once mesmerizing, now seemed menacing, as if they concealed something ancient and malevolent. Captain, I'm detecting a massive energy surge from within the nebula, Ensign Joplin called out from the helm. It's coming straight for us! Evasive maneuvers, full power to shields, Raval ordered, his heart pounding in his chest. The wind grace banked hard to starboard, but the energy surge moved with impossible speed, striking the ship with a force that sent the crew flying from their stations. The lights flickered, and a low, rumbling sound echoed throughout the ship, like the growl of some enormous beast. Report! Rival demanded, pulling himself up from the deck. Hull integrity compromised, Ramirez reported, his voice strained. Decks 12 through 15 have sustained heavy damage. No casualties reported yet, but... But, Captain, th- there's there's something else. What is it, Lieutenant? Th- there's something on the ship, moving through the damaged decks. I'm, I'm reading multiple life signs, but they're... They're not human. They're... they're cold. Before Raval could respond, the lights dimmed and the ship was plunged into darkness. The emergency lighting flickered on, casting long, eerie shadows across the bridge. Bridge to engineering, Raval said, trying to keep his voice steady. What's going on down there? There was no response. Only static. Bridge to engineering, respond! Again, only static. Captain, Tavon said, her voice uncharacteristically soft. I believe we are no longer alone. What do you mean? Raval asked, though he already knew the answer. Tavon's hands moved swiftly over her console. The life signs are moving closer. They are not of this dimension, Captain. I believe they are phasing in and out of our reality. Raval felt a chill run down his spine. He had heard stories of ships lost in the depths of space, never to be seen again. Their crews claimed by some unknown force, but those were just ghost stories, told by cadets to scare each other during late-night shifts. Whatever they are, they're inside our ship now, Rick said, his voice trembling, and they're coming for us. Arm yourselves, Raval ordered. Set phasers to maximum stun. The crew members on the bridge quickly grabbed phasers from the emergency lockers, their hands shaking as they did so. Raval grabbed his own phaser tightly, his mind racing. There had to be a way out of this. There always was. Captain, they are here, Tavon whispered. The temperature on the bridge plummeted, and a dense fog began to seep through the walls, curling around the crew's legs like icy tendril. The fog thickened, and within it, dark, humanoid shapes with glowing, hollow eyes. They're... they're feeding on our our fears, Derek said, his voice barely above a whisper. We have to... we have to stay calm or... or they'll consume us. Consume us all! But it was too late. The shadows lunged, 
moving with unnatural speed. The crew fired their phasers, but the beams passed harmlessly through the entities. One by one, the crew members fell, their screams echoing through the ship as the shadows enveloped them, their bodies dissolving into the mist. Raval fired at the nearest shadow, but it only grew stronger, its hollow eyes locking onto his. He felt a cold hand wrap around his throat, and he gasped for breath, his vision blurring as the life was drained from him. In his final moments, as the darkness closed in, he heard a voice, a whisper from the depths of the nebula, ancient, malevolent. You are ours now, forever. And then, only silence. The USS Windgrace drifted aimlessly at the edge of the anomaly, its crew lost to the void. A ghost ship, forever haunted by the shadows that had claimed it, waiting in the darkness for the next unsuspecting vessel to wander too close. And deep within the nebula, the whispering continued, echoing through the emptiness, a promise of doom for any who dared to venture into its depths. <laughs>